The letter was staring at me. There was something disturbingly familiar about the letter before me. The handwriting was all pretty curves. You're in a graphic novel. The truth split my skull open, a glaring green light washing the lies away. All of my past was just fragmented still shots, words hanging in the air like balloons. I was in a graphic novel, funny as hell. It was the most horrible thing I could think of. Bartender is shiny stuff and dreams are made of stupid necromancers. He sings like a banana wrist, having strayed too close to the constellations on their shaved skulls. The there was a bad line in the prank call, someone spouting Doing insane babble, I couldn't make sense of it. But I had an overwhelming sense of deja vu, and the caller's voice sounded oddly familiar. You're in a computer game, Max. The truth was a burning green crack through my brain, weapon statistics hanging in the air glimpsed out of the corner of my eye, endless repetition of the act of shooting, time slowing down to show off my moves, the paranoid feel of someone controlling my every step. I was in a computer game. Funny as hell, it was the most horrible thing I could think of. Don't lose it. It's Valkyr. The drug. Snap out of it. Try to remember. It was a bad line in a prank call, someone spouting insane babble I couldn't make sense of it. But I had an overwhelming sense of deja vu, and the caller's voice sounded oddly familiar. A. V. N. It's headphones nailed! guys and welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, with my review and recap of playing Max Payne for Android using the Razer Kishi and then ultimately re-watching the film to see how it holds up after all this time. So I'm going to start off with the game itself. So while they did upgrade some of the graphics and lighting elements and things like that, in general the game does play very much like the original version of the PC game. So some of the strafing left and right and moving, aiming and all of that still is the same. Activating bullet time and all of that. The interstitials when you are um, shooting at the bad guys and um, taking them out during bullet time is there. So that's really the only thing that, or the biggest thing that stands out for the game now after 20 years is those interstitials with the facial animation. So Max Payne's face throughout the game and then the bad guy is dying. But other than that, um, the game now kind of doesn't really, for the most part, it holds up. And I think, and then little things like the wheels on the car that don't really turn. So it's a kind of boxy element. So little things like that stand out. But for the most part, as far as actual um, navigation elements, from um, going through New York City and the buildings and all of that sort of stuff still hold up after all this time. So if they were to remake the original Max Payne, that would really be the bulk of it is to update those graphics to be less blocky and more um, smooth and things like that, which I guess they've fixed in in general for Max Payne 2 based on newer hardware and features and abilities and things like that. Um, but beyond that, Overall, the game was good. I enjoyed the storyline. I liked the interstitials as far as the comic book aspect of it to progress the storyline and the internal monologue that Max has throughout the game for what you need to do or where you need to go and that sort of stuff. So it's kind of like subtle hints to play the game and navigate so you know kind of what to do next. There are points that are kind of weird, or at least they were weird to me as far as navigating buildings for what to do next, but it's pretty linear that if you find yourself in a place you've already been, then you probably don't need to be there. You need to find a place you haven't been because that's where you need to go to progress the story. So once you get used to that, in general, the story flows very nicely. And you're basically playing through a live comic book as you're starting at the beginning with the loss of Max's wife and child and then ultimately going after the big bad guy in the form of Nicole Horn with Acer Corporation. So in general I enjoyed playing this game and it made me want to now go in and replay Max Payne 2 which I'll get to at the end of the episode but it's not available on any mobile platform at the moment so um at the end of the episode, I'll touch base on what I plan to do there. 
Um, but in general, if you have a chance to play the game, whether it's via Steam or if you can get it on a console like Xbox or PlayStation or whether, or if you want to play it with or play on your mobile device, I definitely recommend playing the game with a controller like the Kishi because it does make it easier to navigate and aim, switch your weapons and that sort of stuff. So I think when I originally played the game on Android with touchscreen controls, I had the auto aim set to high so it would definitely focus on the bad guys as they showed up. With this version, I had it set to soft so it kind of nudges you in the right direction but that's really about it. And in general, and it wasn't really consistent, so it's kind of the system of the time, but I found that in general, once you know, or once you see the bad guys and you get used to the nav the controls and navigation, you rely less and less on those controls. So if I was to grade the game now, I'd give it about a B plus. The main points to not take down are things that don't stand the test of time, which are the graphics, but in general, the story works as a fun playthrough. It goes very smoothly, so I give it high marks for that. So in general, if I was to give it, you know, a handicap and say, okay, graphics aside, because it's a 2001 game being played in 2021, um, the grade is, would definitely be an A. Um, so like I said, it just goes back to if they redo the graphics, then the game gets a definite A and they actually do not need to change anything else. Um, even as far as the controls and the idea that you have to have painkillers and things like that as instead of, you know, health packs make it for a more um, inclusive storyline. So with that being said, um, going into playing the game, I wa did want to watch the film to see how that stands up. So it was it is currently streaming on Amazon Prime as far as the, I don't I didn't check the original cut, but the uncut version is on Amazon Prime. But I also wanted to watch the Mel Gibson film Payback because I thought I've always thought that it's been a more or it's been a better version of a Max Payne style video game than the actual film, but I couldn't find it streaming anywhere or even for purchase anywhere, so um, I'll keep my eye out for that to see if it ever shows up, but um, this are actually so for this review, um, in watching the film, for most of the film I found doesn't hold up because they changed a lot of stuff in the first two thirds of the film that did not need to be changed and that's basically the whole premise behind um, finding out about Valkyr, the loss of Alex, um, Max Payne's friend, setting up the story of uh, Max's wife and daughter and all of that and basically all of it was so out of place that it didn't really make for an engaging story, it didn't really give me a reason to care for any of the characters. They want you to care about um, Max losing his family, but the setup was tentative at best. And essentially, they start, you know, three years later, like they did in the game, but they don't really go back and resolve any of that or set up Max's character as a person to care about or anything like that. And ultimately, this is one of those films where a voiceover and monologue would help because it would mimic that. Um, story quite a bit rather than you know longing stares by um, um, what's his name in the who plays Max Payne so that's kind of, so for me the movie the, the bad score that the film gets generally um, doesn't work and then you have things like um, Gogniti's cleaners being used as a place for Max's dry cleaner rather than a villain. You don't have um, Lupino being set up as a proper villain, even though the, char the, the character was good for the times he was in the sh in the movie. So, so even though he is an underworld, you know, sub boss, he's not really set up very well. Um, the pivotal intro to the game is halfway through the movie as far as the death of Max's wife and kid. You have Roscoe Street Station and just random um, junkies showing up there and then you have like Alex Balder dying later in the film but not because he wants it. He, uh, he wants to tell Max about the um, drug Valkyr and the connection he made with the wife but it's not at Roscoe Street Station so and it's not necessarily one of those things where you have to be a Max Payne lore um, tra traditionalist or a perfectionist. Because granted, you have to make things fit as far as a film format. But when you change the story so much that it doesn't tie or very, it, very little of it ties to the 
actual content is based off of, it becomes one of those things that's difficult to follow and not basically lose the connection for why you should care for any of the characters. Um, so for me, if they ever decide to remake the Max Payne film or make a proper movie based on the game, they sh should actually start the film with Lupino and the two thugs killing Max's wife for finding out about the drug Valkyr and then Max only knowing seeing the junkies and them still ultimately escaping. Um, and then ultimately learning and then Alex can making the connection um, whether it's through a random death or maybe through, for example, his, you know, Vinny Gognitiel is be actually an informant for him and learns about the drug Valkyr, so wants to meet Max at the Roscoe Street Station, and then Lupino shows up again to kill him. So you build up on Lupino being the big, big bad guy. You have um, uh, Max wanting to learn about what happened to his wife and you know being grief stricken and all of that. And still making the death of Alex the impetus that he now knows that Valkyr is more important than he thought and going into that underworld scenario. Um, and then from there, basically, and so for the actual only real good part about the film, there were two. The first is that the last third of the film, in general, matched the game enough to the point where you could see that it was Max starting in the garage and then making his way up through the Acer building to ultimately um, take out the helicopter and all of that. So that they generally did well to the point where I got to thinking that someone finally decided to play the game and they said that, oh crap, we're you know way off um, track for what's in the game, so let's match what we can here. So that was actually the only part that I thought was good um, in the film as far as being close enough to the game that it was adapted well enough. There were changes and you have, you know, BB going crazy to talk to Nicole Horn and her ultimately cutting the ties and all that. But when you make BB the uh, main villain instead of Nicole Horn, it kind of doesn't, doesn't work. Even though they were trying to set her up as a villain for the next film, um, which would have been okay if the, like reading in the trivia, if the film had done well, they could have done a sequel, which would have worked to carry forward, um, into, you know, tr um, turning Mac Max Payne 2 and 3 into a film or into a movie. So that kind of would have worked, but I think they changed too much of the beginning part of the film to not make it an endeavor that would have ultimately worked. Um, so even like the, in this, so I was reading trivia that, um, that Horn, Nicole Horn, the lady who's running Acer was not set up enough as a villain was actually also pretty minimal in the game as far as her presence, even though she was talked a lot about, especially with like Alfred Woden, who wasn't even in the film either as far as the Max Payne film goes. So, um... That was okay. I mean, they set her up enough in the film, so I was okay with her not being at the end. But then when you don't have, you know, Alfred Woden, you don't have a lot of... Or when you change up the sets and split up the story that doesn't need to be split up, then that's kind of where things fall apart and the movie's not going to be set up for um, being anything good. Um, and basically set up for failure as it was generally panned by the audiences. So um, for me... That's kind of one of those things, one of the reasons why if I was to grade the film, I would probably give it a grade of about a D. Um, so basically I'm just giving them points for the last third of the film, but I can't really give them much else because they did change way too much of the film to the point where it's, well, it's kind of like Street Fighter where they don't have any of the special effects. They set up all these characters to go into street fighting tournament, but then they don't have any actual street fighting. So um, basically, like with Street Fighter, taking out the special effects doesn't work because when you try, you have characters doing the motion of the Hadouken, or you don't have Chun Li doing her kick, or Blanca with his electricity, or anything like that. That's kind of where it falls apart. Um, and then. Now, I'm also gonna give them points for the character or the actors generally looking like their counterparts in the video game. So, um, 
Mark Wahlberg looked enough like Max Payne. Mila Kunis looked enough like Mona Sachs. Uh, uh, Bo Bridges, I think, looked enough like BB. Um, the guy who played Alex, uh, you know him as um, the same as um, Jim Gordon's friend in the Gotham TV series. He looked enough. I guess he looked enough like Alex. We don't have too much of him in the video game to make that connection. Um, I liked Ludacris um, as Jim Bravura, but his character was also changed to be a guy working in internal affairs, which was weird. So. It was kind of basically that, and as far as underused characters, I kind of think I really felt like Ludacris was underused to the point where I really can't give a recommendation as far as like liking or disliking his character. I thought he they could have used more of him, and when you change, and his was probably the character that was changed the most, where you have um, Jim Bravura in the game as a deputy chief going after Max Payne. To the point where Ludacris as Jim Bravura was just an IA guy who didn't, who, I mean, granted Jim Bravura in the game didn't know too much, but, um, and he was, he still thought that Max Payne was out on this personal vendetta. So in the film, I, I didn't mind Ludacris's character learning that Max was, or why Max was doing any of the stuff he was doing, but it would have been nice to expand on that, his character a lot more and have a lot more of him. To the point now that I'm thinking that they tried to combine his kid with Jim Bravura with Alfred Woden, which is why, because in the game at least, Alfred Woden was going to protect Max, but I don't know, that's why it's like basically the, all the characters and stories all, were all over the place for the first two thirds of the film, and then by the end of the film it all fell apart, or it all came together a little bit, that it was going to give you hope as far as that they were going to do a good job, but... It happened too late in the film and with very little um, set up to care for any of the characters. So that's all there is for this particular review. So to round it out, if you have not played Max Payne the video game, I definitely recommend playing the game. If you have not seen the movie, then I don't recommend watching it. If you have an hour and a half and want to watch it, then fine, but I would say watch it first so you have that out of the way and then play the video game so you're kind of moving upward as far as improvement from film to game. Because um, if you play the game first and then watch the movie, it's going to be a downhill thing and see how a, just another example of a video game not or a movie not translating a video game well especially in this case when you have a film set up or you have a video game set up as with the interstitial cars and a story and all of that and you really only need to take things out um so for example they had a scene with bb and max at a submarine but you don't you know how you have mila kunas working with the russians but you don't have any setup with vlad who turns out to be the friend for max kind of like a um, enemy of my enemy and then max getting geared up at the sub so things like the at least the sub scene and all of that like especially what happens in the second chapter of the game can be left out and i'm glad and i, I like that they incorporated the dream sequence and they took out some of those extra chapters where you're just running around random buildings which was fine and they kept in only the stuff that was necessary but it was just all over the place to the point where they didn't need to do any of that. They had a story that was set up to bu to build the story from start to finish. They just needed to, you know, merge the, or either have a voiceover by Mark Wahlberg or present the story in the same order as the game and you have a story that is good to go. And, it's, and you know, for me, it would have been nice to have Lad in the movie, but... Um, and it would have been okay to mix, you know, Alfred Woden and um, Jim Bravura and have Ludacris play kind of a dual role in personality, but um, they did. They basically put everything out of order, cut stuff that didn't need to be cut, put things in, treat, rearranged stuff, and essentially messed up to the, the story to the point where it didn't or you get the result that you see in this film so like i said play the game skip the movie and that is the bulk of that so that's all there is for this particular review so if you have any questions comments feedback or anything like that you can find me on twitter at patel n01 the website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes subscription links supporting the show and all of that good stuff um and if, as far as an update, as far as Max Payne 2 goes, 
um, for patrons, look out for an upcoming uh, bonus post as far as the game after the Doom 64 um, playthrough is started. I'm going to run a quick test just to test something out and give an initial review to see if that works. But I am ultimately forecasting to play Max Payne 2 on Steam. So that I kind of want that to be a game review, but I have to make sure that I have enough system requirements to play the game uh, to begin with. It should be old enough to the point where running it on minimal settings at least should work, but um, that should be that's going to be one of those tests I run. And of course, if you want to stay up to date on those, the bonus content and extra reviews that I do for patrons, you can visit the Patreon at patreon.com slash patelhand01. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and